Happy weekend, Foot Clan. We have all of your questions, your deepest, most important fantasy questions on our mind, in our hearts, and we're here for you this weekend. Uh, make sure you like the video, smash subscribe, enjoy your weekend, and let's let's bring home some championships this year. Enjoy. Hey, this is Mike Kosicki, tight end for the Miami Dolphins, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh. It's a Saturday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Mike Wright, a hungry Jason Moore, and Andy Holloway back with you. I am famished. The amount of food discussion that happened directly before hitting record today was too much for the producers to handle. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got very upset at us that we would not record this show. Yeah, I was delayed. <laughs> Because orders were being placed for for lunch, yeah, and um, somehow we are supposed to be the people in charge somehow. of this circus. It never feels, and like yet that. we are, we are the children. Yeah, and the deucers, we are the world. The deucers don't really, <laughs> thank you, have much control. No, they at the end of the day, we let them feel like they do. Yeah, they did hit the intro False like three sense. or four times, <laughs> and we just didn't start the show. No, we went back to burger talk. I mean, one of them has a birthday, and they oh, think they're in charge. There it is. The Borgogan, happy birthday. Today is Kyle's birthday, and now he is... Uh, happy birthday. Have some candy. He's entering the ages <laughs> where you don't really want to celebrate him anymore, which is sad because we did a Spitballers episode, and we said things from your childhood that right. you're nostalgic about, that mm -hmm. you miss. And Mike, one of your draft picks was the birthdays. Yeah. My birthdays. Your, my, well, yeah, Mike's like, birthday. I, would not, I miss Mike's birthdays yeah, from my childhood. You. Like, I'm not stoked for Kyle's birthday. Mm -mm. My birthday. No, no. But happy birthday, Kyle. He, he, didn't, he doesn't yeah, even want to talk. No acknowledgement. He's out of here. Um, He's I hope it's so a great day. angry that he had to come in on his birthday <laughs> and record. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. UltimateDraftKid.com. It's almost August. Draft season is upon us. Uh, you can get in there. Get all of our player projections, sleepers, breakouts, bust values. The draft analyzer is back. It's been improved. The cheat sheet creator, brand new, rebuilt from the ground up and better than ever. So you have something to uh, prepare yourself for, get ready for draft day. This is the most fun time of the year. You're undefeated right now. That's You're going right. to be undefeated for a while. Yeah, for the rest of the month. And so very excited about what's coming. Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow us over there. Jason at Jason FFL. You can send him food pictures. Uh, oh, God, Mike at FF Hitman. Now, you went from the uh, the backwards cap to a quick front cap. Like, I thought it was backwards when we walked in the room, and now it's facing Gen forward. Generally speaking, I try to – I go forward for the recording. Oh, is that what happens? Yeah, every once in a while, the the camera catches me slipping, and I and I got my cool snap back on Ooh, backwards. I, I wonder if the takes are different. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. have, like, business takes and then, like, yes. party takes? Yeah, yeah. backwards hat, Mike. He lets <laughs> loose. <laughs> Is that the – which one's Blake Jarwin? Is it the backwards cap or the forwards? I stand by my Blake Jarwin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, which one's Adam Troutman? Sorry. Is, it, is that I, the backwards cap? I stand by my Blake <laughs> Jarwin takes. Oh, uh, we stand till we fall. That's the, the old saying. Uh, Jointhefoot.com is the fantasy community. Today's quick question uh, comes from Twitter. Would really love to know your favorite draft positions in a 12-team league. And is there any difference for a 10-team league, if, whether it's your favorite spot this year? Um, I, I, I think that there is slight difference in a 10-team league. But really, for me this year, what I've seen from uh, my underdog drafts, my favorite spot is the second. I, I want one of those two running backs. I the like the Christian McCaffrey spot. Yes, the Christian McCaffrey spot where I don't have to have the courage. I just have to hope that the person with the one on one was uh, fearful, uh, coward, 
Um, and then I can be brave and take Christian McCaffrey. Otherwise, I like the four. Grab one of those two wide receivers. As in Jefferson or Cooper Cup. That is. So you kick the rest. Two. You're not ever taking a running back at two, uh, three, four. I haven't been. I mean, it, it, obviously, league format would matter here. If it's you know two wide receiver, two running back, n standard non PPR. Sure, I, I would go running back. But otherwise, I'm I'm going wide receiver early. And then if I don't get those, I want to be near the end of the first round, like just off the turn. I hate right now. I hate the like. Seven eight spot in this year's draft, which is exactly where Mike and I drafted in our last mock, and it wasn't a great time. I, I liked my team. Yeah, I mean, in the end, the, the team was good, but the decision making was more difficult. I think maybe that was just being back to back with you. Yeah, um, still a, a groundswell for the Deucers to be involved in a mock draft. Yeah, too so many people asking. For I think that. I think we will have to do that. Okay. At some point, now whether the the three of them run one team in the mock draft or they're split, I don't know. See, people, what you don't understand about our mock draft episodes is that it's an entire mock draft on an episode. And so if every single spot is filled by individual analysis, the episode would still be going. They right are now. not I, talking. I have the solution. Absolutely, Mike. Yeah. They they do not get to weigh in on their opinions. We get to. We weigh on on their picks. Yeah, yeah. buddy. We yes. get to mock their picks. Oh, it'll be. A, you know what? I'm starting to like this idea. What if we don't even pick and they pick and we just mock the picks? Sounds that'd good. be a different kind of. That'd be a mock draft of another sort. We got one coming up soon, right? We do. I think so. Judge. Early August. Okay. Not very Sounds specific. like you guys are in. <laughs> they just don't live to snipe us. That's what will happen. But maybe that's more like a home league. Yeah. Where yeah, people live to see us suffer. We'll get it. I think it's a good experiment. We should we should I, uh, I completely should agree. move forward with it. Do you share Jason's sentiment about where to pick? Do you have a favorite spot this year? Or I mean, just... I I'm still in on Christian McCaffrey. I bring the pain, bring the suffering. because uh, I think he will be truly a, a difference maker if he doesn't get hurt again. Uh, other than that, I've been, I like, uh, you know, five, six around there. Cause I'm with Jason that I really like starting my draft with, uh, with Justin Jefferson. And I think in most, in most drafts I have been in like one of those wide receivers has dropped. So you're just getting, you know, a slightly better pick at the, at the, when it's coming back in the second round. So I'm, I'm willing to, to risk it a little bit there. All right. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Money, 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 money. Kyler Murray signed a five-year extension, which means he is under contract with the Cardinals for the next six years. Him, uh, he's tied with uh, Cliff Kingsbury and, and Steve Keim. $230.5 million, keeping him in Arizona through 2028, 160 of it guaranteed. That's the bigger thing. Yeah, which I mean, some if you look at this contract and you compare it to what Deshaun Monson just signed, it's worse. I mean, I I get it. What do you it. mean it's worse? Well, I he How got is it worse. He got half a million because of the guaranteed money I for mean, him. Yes, okay. yes. I'm okay, saying we weren't sure where. Yeah, yeah. The the direction was. I get what you're saying now, but the the Watson deal was worse. Is what you're saying. I am saying that, no, that the Kyler Murray deal was worse than Deshaun Watson's deal because Deshaun Watson got 100% guaranteed. Kyler got half a million more um, and 0.1 million more on the numbers that say, you know, the average. But in truth, he got a worse deal because he got 160 million guaranteed versus all of it guaranteed. It's that's what I'm saying. That's my belief. You're coming from the Kyler perspective. I think that's where we got thrown off as we were saying, which yeah. deal was worse for the franchise. And you were saying, which one's worse for Kyler? Sure. Yes. Um, you know, this is where you don't have a choice. You either sign your franchise quarterback or you don't. And so this is the NFL. And if he look, if he's around in 2028, the deal worked, I don't care anything else because they can get out of it earlier right. than that. If it doesn't work. And luckily, the Browns did not completely destroy the world because the entire deal wasn't guaranteed. And that's something that was a concern once Watson ha signed his deal. Um, for better or for worse, you know, I brought it up in the studio yesterday. The sentiment around Kyler is very negative. And this show, we're Arizonans. So you're not going to take any of our words to mean anything 
that isn't biased, it seems. But he was the MVP of the first seven games of the year last year. Um, on pace for almost 50 touchdowns, 5,000 yards, 74% completion percentage. It was working in Arizona. Now He was dominating. It fell apart over the back half of the year. But for fantasy players, Kyler on the field equals fantasy production, and that's really the headline here. And he'll be in Arizona with Hopkins and, and Hollywood and, and company for the next few years. Did you guys have any other thoughts on the deal? Nope. Did you think there was any chance this wasn't happening? Uh, no. Nope. It, we, I mean, you don't let – no one lets star quarterbacks go. So you knew that a deal was going to get done. And, you know, it's funny being in Arizona and you hear the local uh, people complain about, ah, oh, it's too much. It's like, this is what you hope. You hope when you draft a guy that you're going to give him a massive extension. It yes. means he's good and it worked. Good draft pick. Michael Thomas placed on the active PUP list to start training camp. Which – this is the time of the year you have to remind people training camp has a pup list that is not the regular season pup list. In the regular season, if you're put on it, you miss a mandatory four games and then you can come back. In training camp, you can you can go on the pup list and come off the very next day. That's right. And all the and the, the beat reporters are saying he's on it right now. He's not expected to be on it very long. The Bucks signed veteran tight end Kyle Rudolph to a one year deal. This is sort of interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think sort in a re of. I don't think in a redraft league that I would be looking at Kyle Rudolph. There's just other younger, more talented uh tight ends that are great at the end of your draft. But when you're doing an 18 round best ball draft and you know, is Kyle is Kyle Rudolph going to have touchdowns this year? Yeah. yeah. I, how many what do you think over under of of uh three and a half touchdowns Kyle yeah, Rudolph? I'll take the over. Yeah, I mean, that's not a lot. Right. Yeah, I'm just I, I think he'll have three or four touchdowns. So I'm with you on that. I it's he had 26 receptions last year. Obviously, the Vikings moved on from him two years ago, so he will be a piece of a a puzzle at tight end for this team. So I'm am I interested in any sort of 12 man league? Not really. I uh, there was a report, and it, it, we're getting into the reports from beat writers area of the news, but worth discussing. This is where we are. This. Uh, off-season news from Charles uh, Goldman of Chiefs Wire did not include Ronald Jones on the projected 53-man roster. Oh, man. Because he could be cut <laughs> with a dead cap hit of 750000 I mean, it's a one-year, $1.5 million deal. So to me, while that means he could be cut, it also means he's very cheap to keep if he's a piece of the puzzle. Yeah, the news uh, a couple weeks ago was that he could have the clear starting role. The news uh, now is that he could be cut. The reality is all of the news then and now is just the opinion of one person writing an article they need to do. Uh, so don't don't swing your draft based on these reports. These are, to me, those are the ones we sift through and say, next yeah wait wait a little bit and then there was a report as well uh regarding the the backfield that I, I mean to me it's not even a report it's just what they've done yeah about Kyle Shanahan appearing determined to deploy more of a backs by committee approach this is from NBC Sports this is what he's done yeah they, we got five years six years of evidence that you know you got a backfield where Elijah Mitchell was clearly the best back and is right now but was not durable. He was injured a ton last year. I think four or five different body parts. You've got a draft pick in Trey Sermon and a draft pick in um, Davis Price. And then you have Jeff Wilson, which is more of the kind of incumbent depth piece on this roster. And you've got Jamal, Jeff. You've also got Jamichael Hasty. So you have five running backs. And generally speaking, the 49ers, I mean, five straight years of a different number one. So you are – you're taking a risk with Elijah Mitchell in as much as it hasn't really been one guy for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I think that the risk is baked into his ADP, though, yes. to the point of I'm willing to accept that risk for I, – I still think Elijah Mitchell will be valuable and be the predominant guy. Yeah, it'll be a committee, absolutely. But I still think Mitchell's very interesting. And Kyle Juszczyk, yeah. And and the hard All part the, juice. the hard part is is that in you know you don't start your offseason saying Elijah Mitchell is going to get hurt. And you don't start your offseason saying Raheem Mostert's going to get hurt. It's just a difficult thing because the upside of the running back in San Francisco is so tremendous that you can't ignore them, right? This is not talking about the committee in Houston. 
This is talking about one of the best running games in football and always will be. And so, you know, do I think you could take a late round flyer on one of the other guys? Yeah, I would do it just to see what happens in camp. The doghouse, you know, sometimes coaches have a doghouse that's right. like no one can be in it at times. I think Shanahan has a require. It's an mm -hmm. occupancy minimum. Yes. You yes, must keep yep. five people in it. And Brandon Ayuk's always got his spot, but rules with fear. Over cor there. Correct. So it, it's just difficult, but there's upside on some of these other players. Do I, is it possible? Chase Sermon emerges from the depths. Yeah, no, no it is. <laughs> it is possible. I don't think it is. Jason, you, I, I think it is possible. Just Third be, round draft pick by this regime. I mean, I, that's not what I project. I, if I'm taking a shot, I'm going to take Tyrion Davis price because them drafting him shows that maybe they do not believe, uh, you know, in what they drafted last year in Trey Sermon. So I'm certainly not projecting that. But Andy's right. You, it could absolutely, like, there's no one more, there's nothing more Shanahan again than coming out week one of Trey Sermon's just the starter. Like, he, he don't care. He's going to do whatever he won't. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's going to be interesting. And Camp will tell us a lot. Because two of them will get hurt. That's that's what say. That, that's all it will tell us is who the injury goes to. Unfortunately, there was also a running back by committee report uh, from Josh Schrock of NBC Sports talking about Khalil Herbert and David Montgomery. We discussed this recently, just about you know David Montgomery in general, how it's an unsexy pick in drafts because um, you know he's been around the block. It's his final year there, but he has been pretty reliable. But Herbert showed stuff last year as well. So Yeah, it's a new coaching regime there. So you, you can't just apply how they used players last year into this year. We really use regime a lot in fantasy. What would you... Well, you can, it's a coaching staff. I mean, sure. it, there, there's other words, but we really go the regi regime route, which is, I just think it's interesting. Yeah. And I don't mean okay. we, I mean like everybody in yeah, fantasy. Yeah, that's like that's the, the vernacular of Like sports. why do we like regime? It's a, it's a fancy sounding word. Yeah, it's like they're rulers. But that's like a dictatorship sound, yeah. you know? Well, I mean, Shannon, we got Shanahan being a mean guy. That's fair. Ruling with fear. And guess what? Josh Rosen has been signed by another team. <laughs> the Browns grabbed him probably in preparation for Watson's suspension. And, um, yeah, I mean, Watson's going to get suspended, and they need camp quarterbacks, which nobody plays camp quarterback role better than Josh Rosen. I'm proud of him. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he's he keep on going, Josh. Like keep trying, keep trying. I'm uh, you know yes. Well, there's no quit in him. He's still trying, giving it the old college try. Or is he just just playing the system right now? Like if you're Josh Rosen, do you want to go get a regular go yeah, go get like a day to day job, or like go work in a, an office, or just keep being a backup, making not awful money. Does he make a good impression? Uh, like, I, I uh, thought that was person? part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's If if you look at – did you see this this morning? If you look at his Twitter profile, yes. yes. he has a – his Twitter picture is from the being drafted by the Cardinals. Uh -huh. His Twitter background is a press conference when he was with the Dolphins, and his actual Twitter bio says, quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, yeah. and now he is with – The Cleveland Browns. The Browns. Yeah. He doesn't care about Twitter. No. No, he, he's that, just he's living. He's like, got to write him out. I, I was way. gonna say he's <laughs> we're we're the morons yeah. living our lives on Twitter. You guys ready for some mailbag? Let's go. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. Saturday. <laughs> you were getting some praise on on cool. the YouTube comments, Mike, because just the restraint you've been able to show this off season not saying it's football time on any intro, which, I mean, I imagine... But it's not football time. I, I know, but I imagine it's a, when you get to say it, it's really fun. Well, I mean, I will take that credit, but it's really just a product of it not being football time. Right, right. Uh, if you have a question for the show, for the mailbag, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button. You can also dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We will kick it off with a voicemail. Hey, ballers, in a double flex league, do you lean more towards running backs or wide receivers for that extra depth you need to have? Thanks. Love the show. 
Jason, you're nodding with with an answer. Yeah, well, it's a it's a great question because I think it's one you need to ask about. You know, when you go into your draft, which should you lean? And it really is a product of your league settings. If I'm in a full PPR, I lean much more towards wide receivers in the uh, in the double flex because what happens is if if you if you look at the the analytics of you know running back finishes versus wide receiver finishes and you go from standard to half point to PPR it's kind of as expected we're in a half point PPR league the flex position is going to be pretty 50-50 in which case i tend to prefer to have the running back depth on my roster so if i if i feel like there's an even running back and an even wide receiver I do tie break with running back just for injury depth, but um, if it's a full PPR, I'm going to leave that draft with more wide receivers than running backs. Instagram question from Harrison Mike 84 thoughts on Hunter Renfro and why you never <laughs> draft him. He was the wide receiver 11, 128 targets for 103, uh, 10, 38 and nine last year, 21% target share. I I have no active attempt going on not to draft Hunter Renfro. But I think we just see the situation as being so different than it was last year for the Raiders where you have somebody in Devontae Adams that demands more target share than any wide receiver in football. You have a very talented target in Darren Waller. Well, and Waller, when, like, when Hunter Renfro went on his run at the end of the year, Darren Waller was hurt from week 13 on through the end of the season. He played in week 18, but missed. he missed five games, or basically six if you count the one he was hurt in. So that there, were, it's it's almost it, it's similar to what happened with Amon Ross St. Brown for the Detroit Lions where he went on a run, and we're talking about, you know, okay, was it Amon Ross just so good that this is the, the normal for him for the Lions, or like, do you believe in it was a product of – everybody else for the Lions being hurt because the the Raiders really had nobody like, like other than Hunter Renfro at the end like I don't say Jones was pulling in like five of five receptions a week I expect Hunter Renfro to get 90 to 100 targets I don't think that's going to change but what made him that impressive wide receiver 11 was nine touchdowns because even in that stretch you had games 49, 40, this is yardage totals, 49, 46, 30, 32, 40. Like, he is not going to be a huge yardage player. He will be a third down target. And, heck, maybe he'll be a red zone target still. He's but, so good at it. But, um, yeah, it kind of reminds you almost of the Julian Edelman mind meld with Brady where uh, maybe not prototypical red zone but still a target I just don't think Renfro is going to repeat anything close to what he did last yeah, year. Yeah, that's the the problem is, and there's a ceiling. Like there's a, I don't think the upside is there. Yep, it's playing for fantasy football for so long, seeing these guys with the breakout and then their situation changes drastically, and it was, and they just get buried. Yeah, he's, it's very simple. He's going from. Uh, oftentimes last year, the number one target in the offense to the number three target in the offense. And he's not, he's great uh, in, in, in the red zone, but he's not built for that. So when you bring on the best red zone wide receiver in all of football, it's going to take touchdowns away. Yeah. A little, little reminiscent of Jamison Crowder having a couple of decent years in sure. Washington, but not, it's not like you were building your offense around him. You just had to go to him a lot. Uh, a follow-up there from Instagram, Jason. Do you lean the Hunter Renfro or Adam Thielen route? I personally – oh, man. I Thielen by a lot for me. Yeah, and I get it, and I I completely understand Thielen, the new offense. I love the Vikings, but I just don't want to be holding the bag, and I I would take Hunter Renfro over Thielen. I'm, I'm just happy – look, I'm rooting for Thielen, but I'm not drafting him this year because I don't want to – be the one grabbing him when he uh, is done, and I fear that that's it's either this year or next year, just historically speaking. And I'm looking elsewhere. You're a little afraid of the elderly. I am ageist when it comes to fantasy football. Yes, you know, yeah, wrink it's a, wrinkly. Well, I mean, you just, in spots. I, I noticed. I mean, the conversation earlier. You fragile. You're not talking about Derrick Henry at your three four, which I think is, you know, it's just kind of insulting to the that community of I get it. Of ages. Guilty as charged. Let's hit another voicemail. 
What's up, ballers? This is Joe C. from your neighbor in desert in New Mexico. I had a question. I know you guys talked about a way to join the competitive leagues and, you know, get a, be a part of the community. And I wanted to ask, I guess, if you guys kind of summarize a little bit more um, as far as the options I have to, you know, get together with someone and play some good old fantasy football. Shout out to the Deucers. <laughs> uh, this is troubling. That's now how you get your voicemail see, through. You know, you, now I see how the voicemail got picked. Yeah. Um, well, I'll start here, and then I'll hand it off to you guys to talk more. But fundamentally, fantasy football is as fun as the people you play with. I mean, those leagues that you're in where you have two or three people that aren't active, that aren't doing anything, that can really damage the experience for everybody in the league. And so one of the things we've wanted to facilitate from the beginning is an ability for this community of incredible listeners, players, that enjoy playing to come together and build out some leagues that have people that are all dedicated and enjoy that. And we've watched that happen over the years with foot clan supporters. And we, you, there's a couple ways that you can connect with them uh, at join the foot.com. You get access to the community on the forums. So foot clan is a, is a forum where you can find people. And then re more recently we've added the discord server which you can join, and there are Foot Clan specific uh, places you can find leagues as well. Yeah, we and and you know we've talked about giving shout outs recently about some of the leagues that have come together there, and really when you you know it's like uh, Andy, you just had a post about uh, join the Foot and and, and uh, the whole Patreon environment, and some of the comments on that were talking about their experiences coming along and, and being a part of this and seeing the progressive progression and joining others in that. And that my favorite comment was uh, from someone who's been a long, long time listener about how the first year or two was, you know, it was like we were their secret sauce and it was like, Oh, you got to keep it away from the other league mates. And it, and it worked for a while, but then as, as other league mates get involved or you share the show, um, it, it it's more fun and all of a sudden now it's like a the inside joke the inside jokes and the community and all that so when you join a league from footlandleagues.com you are you're getting a you know a like-minded group of of fun uh people all right quick break and back with some more questions YouTube question from Shane Saunders for Jason. You okay. said that mid-tier quarterbacks changing teams won't entice you this year. Does Matt Ryan count? Great, great question. Yes. I, um, I also uh, let me rephrase it. Are you a liar? That is well, no, I'm not a liar because I have tried uh, my best to make sure that uh, Carson Wentz <laughs> and uh, Baker Mayfield that these guys have not enticed me too much. Um, the question is good. Does Matt Ryan count as that mid-tier quarterback that cannot save the day? And I find myself thinking that he does not count. I mean, this is a former MVP of the league. His raw metrics last year were still very good, despite not a lot of talent around him, um, not a good offensive line. So I do think Matt Ryan is a significant upgrade here. This is a certainly a great thing to look back on at the end of this year and be like, did that change and 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 the the improvement in system and coach in offensive line was that enough to take an older version of Matt Ryan and keep him great um or is this just you know Philip Rivers part 2 Yeah I was trying to as as you said that I was trying to get the age of Philip Rivers when he joined the Colts which he's 40 right now so he had to have been right around that 37 38 yeah. year old range. Mm -hmm. So that will be interesting. Um, is Matt Ryan on the tail end of his career? Or does he have a year or two like, you know, a Kurt Warner in Arizona did to be able to move? You know, we like the structure around him. Yes. So that gives you optimism, but I also really liked the structure around Phillip rivers, um, during his time there. So it, it makes me cautious, Mike. Do I, I think Matt Ryan is very good. Uh, I mean, and Philip Rivers in 2020 in Indianapolis, himself not a you know not a top tier fantasy quarterback, but basically 4,200 yards and 24 touchdowns. Like, if Matt Ryan's putting that up in Indianapolis, like you have like Michael Pittman should be 
excellent with with that number, and then like some one of the other pass catchers too will have some relevance. So I, I that's plenty to me. But isn't that disappointing in the grand scheme? Because Wentz put up twenty seven touchdowns and four thousand yards last year. Yeah, I mean, but the, Matt, but, but Pittman was still had a breakout season. Well, and I get, but, but that's all I you, care about. All I care about is Michael Pittman. Yeah, I think there's two different ways to look at this question. Is is but then Matt, it's neutral. Right, but the, so the question to me is, is Matt Ryan good for fantasy with this change? And in that, even though we like the system, I don't love Matt Ryan for fantasy because, you know, you've got uh, Mo Ali Cox to get a couple touchdowns here or there. You've got Pittman to soak up a lot, but there is not a bunch of pass catchers around him. But Matt Ryan is still, I believe, a, a, a leap forward from Carson Wentz. So when you're talking about Pittman, I think Pittman goes – far north of what he was able to do last year. So yeah, it's pro Pittman, not necessarily pro Matt Ryan for f individual fantasy success in 2022. Yeah, the, the exact language you used when discussing this topic was move the needle. Do they move the needle for the receiving core, or does the needle stay the same? And that would be the standard by which to judge sure. Matty Ice over the course of the year. Uh, let's hit another voicemail. What's up, Ballers? Uh, dynasty question for you. Would you trade Jamison Williams for Mike Williams? Uh, finished fifth last year, kind of middle of the pack. Obviously, adding a top 15 receiver would upgrade my team. Thanks a lot. Love the show. Ooh, this I'm is a great cool question. Jamison Williams for Mike Williams in Dynasty. In di I mean, if I'm competitive in any way, shape, or form, the answer is yes. The, the, the yes as in you want Mike Williams? Correct. That's where I am as well. Fresh deal, best quarterback in football or a top three quarterback. Yeah. Um, proven track record, not presently as injured as Jamison Williams. Williams may take two, three years to, to mature into which, somebody which that word? you're sorry. <laughs> Hopefully not Mike or my, my, uh, argument is void, but Jamison Williams could take two or three years. It could be the next quarterback in Detroit. He could bust. And yes, it, that's a good point. Like he could be a Treadwell. We don't know. You you said it right off the bat. The the thing that pushes me to the Mike Williams, uh, in addition to everything of just we and the known commodity, uh, the the projection this year is the contract. He just signed a three year sixty million dollar contract, so you know the next three years he's part of the plan. Yeah. So it, I, the age gap doesn't scare me as much knowing he's got a fresh new bag of money. All right, let's hit another voicemail. Hey guys. I was curious to know who is your favorite fantasy football player of all time. Thanks. Love the show. We actually get asked this question quite often, and my answer has never changed. My favorite yeah. of all time is Arian Foster. Is Arian Foster. Uh, do you know my favorite of all time since we've – LaDainian uh, Tomlinson. Ladanian that Tomlinson. is correct. And mine is Antonio Brown. All right. That was I, easy. Yeah, I, I think I could have guessed that. Yeah. Um, multiple titles with my man Antonio. But nobody knows the Deucer's favorite fantasy football oh, players okay. Let's of all go. time. Let's all right. go, Deucer's. Uh, mine is also Antonio Brown. Had him as a, really? as my single keeper and a full PPR for all of those glorious years. Man, he made an impact on those that had him on his roster, on their roster. <laughs> Mine's Keenan Allen, always. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah. Could have right. got that one. Al? Jamal Charles. Ah, that's a, that's okay. a great answer. All right. Uh, my, my memories of Jamal Charles are uh, two. The first year, I was I joined the League of Record. I finally got in. We did an expansion draft uh, for the keepers, and so I got to you know go to the pool, and so, somehow Jamal Charles is there. I'm like, excellent. Uh, I will take him. And that was when he tore his ACL. What was it, like week two, week th week three or so. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I never had him on another team. Until, uh, or not until, but never had him on another team. Just didn't work out. And then faced him in the fantasy football playoffs when he had the uh, well, four touchdown, the four or five touchdown week. And, and I had, like, by far the best team. It was a, on the so way to So it's not win. good memories of no, Jamal Charles. No, no, Jamal Charles, I mean, great player. Just I can tell you, if you had him. Personally attacked me. It was a good time. That's that's how I feel about Antonio Brown. Like, I, <laughs> it was Mike you, attack. Mike, yeah. Mike had Antonio Brown for that whole stretch yes. of, of dominance, and nobody else – got like a single share you know usually you know there's yep. a handful of uh, managers that get to you know share in some of that glory but you had them the whole stretch so yeah, it was fun yeah no it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> uh instagram question from jmc donald 77 can i draft leonard fournette in the second 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Why? It, someone, there's a counseling session now. Mm-hmm. Why can't I draft him? Why do? I, why am I not able to do it? Um, you you're personally. saying you, me and personally, Andy Holloway. Why? Can't, why can't oh. I take the second round leap? Why can't I trust Leonard Fournette? Why? Why am I here? I think that you are uh, anti Leonard Fournette as a player. He is overweight. He's had. Um, you know, some d- discipline issues in the past. He's had, discipline. he's had inefficiency uh, and ineffectiveness on massive volume in the past. And so it's not exciting a lot of times to have Leonard Fournette uh, because of all of those things. But when he is the pass catching and goal line back for a really good offense led by Tom Brady, I mean, we just we know the fantasy value will 100% be there. The only way it doesn't work out is if they literally move on from him, and I don't see that happening. Well, let me give you some names that make it hard for me. Okay. And uh, how they hit. First, I'm going to start. I'm going to let it hit fresh. Leonard Fournette. Okay. Leonard Fournette. Got You've it. Got We're talking the, like the back of the second. DeAndre Swift. Oh, no, of course. I would take Swift. Aaron Jones. I would take Aaron Jones. Javante Williams. That's where it's really, really close. That one is is tough because I I project uh, for Leonard Fournette to have a better season, uh, but you're you're talking about talent versus opportunity. Um, I don't have a problem going either way, but I'd probably go Leonard Fournette. The crazy thing here for Leonard Fournette is, I mean, you remember he okay, flashback to last year. I mean, he. It was a toss-up between him and Ronald Jones. We weren't sure who was actually going to be the starter, and and Leonard Fournette didn't start off great. You know, running back 35, 25, 44, and then goes on this huge run because uh, Ronald Jones fumbled, and then Fournette becomes the guy. But the guy had 180 carries, barely over 800 rushing yards, eight rushing touchdowns. He just had so many freaking receptions mm-hmm. that he just. That's why it feels bad because it feels like he, it was cheap that he just padded his way there with a with a with a couple of uh, like five dollar bills just just stacking on top of each other and all of a sudden you're like oh actually I do have a lot of money they're just in five yeah it's it was it's <laughs> it's what he does it's inefficient and he's not that great eighty four targets yeah, but yeah. you don't have to look right yeah, isn't this just, the stock on the stock market that's just boring but at the end of the day you make more money off of it right so once he took over in in week four through the rest of his playing season because he missed the last uh few games here are the running backs who scored more fantasy points than him uh during that which was basically weeks four through 15 still the majority of the season yeah jonathan taylor of course mm-hmm. austin eckler was awesome i'm done Oh, then it's man. Leonard Fournette. <laughs> so you yeah, can't you, be done, man. So yeah, I mean, it's tough. Like it's not right. It's not right. Thank you, Mike. Stand up for what is right. It's not right. But I mean, if you can go Justin Jefferson in the first round, Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, and you come back and you grab Leonard Fournette and David Montgomery, like that is the least sexy pair that can probably win you a title. Totally fine. That nobody's going to acknowledge. Yeah, because it sounds, if, sounds like a couple gross running backs are going to be pretty good. You could throw Connor in. I was going to say James too. Connor. I would prefer over Fournette. Over Fournette, yeah. I, I would definitely prefer him over Montgomery. Um, but, and Mon- yeah, and Montgomery. It, but those two are often like if if you started early. So let's say you you're at the 103 um, or, or the 102, and you do take uh, Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, whoever you like there at wide receiver. That's the spot in the draft where in your second, third round turn, you can often get Leonard Fournette and James Conner. I think there are two two classifications of running backs in fantasy football. Ones that when you hear their name, you think what can go wrong. And ones that when you hear their name, you think what can go right. And I think that's the first impulse that you get on certain players. Gibson, for two years, what can go right. Yeah, right? yeah and upside. That, and it's upside. DeAndre Swift. What can go right? Javante Williams. What Ooh, can go what right? What can go right? Awesome. But then players like Connor with injury histories, Montgomery, troubling teams and committees, even, you know, those are the what can go wrong guys. And I think that that emotion 
can just change who you draft. We're only human, Andy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube question from Jimmy. When does the Megla Bowl start again for 2022? Oh. <sighs> Megla Bowl. Me Bowl. Uh, it is starting very, very soon. We will probably uh, spin it up here in a couple of weeks once August What's the Megla Bowl? rolls around. The Megla Bowl is the greatest, uh, best, most specialist <laughs> league uh, that you can <laughs> – Join it such is such a vocabulary. Yeah, such a it's like I'm a, a walking thesaurus. It's but, the gnarliest. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Most so, radical. Uh, the so what is the Mega Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> the Mega Bowl is where all the Foot Clan gets together uh, at Join the Foot. You, we join a single league. You're going to be in in your own twelve person league, and then there will be playoffs in the playoff weeks from the top three uh, teams from each league. And eventually, all of these thousands of teams, there will be one victor, a Foot Clan winner, the specialist person out oh there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And that lucky winner, not lucky, that impressive <laughs> drafter, that deft fantasy manager will be in our next year's Listener League, guaranteed a spot. And so if you... It's a massive league. Yes. How many... Thousands of players were in it last year. Do we know? Do we know the I, total? I don't remember off the top of my head. There were there's uh, seventeen thousand plus in the Foot Clan right now that are eligible to enter. It's so, a pretty it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. And so that tournament will begin very soon, and you will get access if you're supporting the show at jointhefoot.com. Join me. Yeah, we play those leagues on Sleeper, so it's very easy to. Uh, to get in and, and, and we're making some together. improvements this year we are if you played last year and some things frustrated you yep uh we're gonna go deep we're we're going to have the fantasy playoffs continue to be what everyone's league's fantasy playoffs are this year so it'll be weeks uh 15 16 17 in the so no bye week players in the playoffs in uh, other words we're making an adjustment yes to move it forward to match traditional leagues because it's right. been later in previous years, which caused some, or earlier in previous yeah. years, which caused some issues. And, um, you know, shout out to Ray, who yep. uh, works to commissioner this multi thousand player uh, extravaganza. It's a lot of fun. It's engaging. We put up the, the leaderboards uh, on the website. You can see last year's at megalobowl.com right now, but we'll, that, that'll be being updated soon for 2022. And uh, I might. I might play around with the scoring a little this year. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so. Yeah, make drafting a little bit more. You get to do what I want. <laughs> well, so pay attention. Dig deep, Foot Clan. Yeah, that, that, that's a cool idea. I think we should do that. Uh, Keeper League question, Mike. We'll wrap it up here. Okay. Uh, T. Higgins or Keenan Allen? Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, wow. I think it's Keenan Allen if it you're just like in a keeper league if it's just one wide receiver or a couple of players you know I'm not I'm not looking three years down the road it's just who would I rather draft this year and I think it's Keenan Allen <laughs> ah. ask me Andy okay Jason if you had to choose between Keenan Allen and T Higgins who T Higgins Easily. It, it's, it's easily T. Higgins for me because I think touchdown upside, if you had to say which one of these guys, I mean, they both got great quarterbacks. Both got quarterbacks could throw a ton of touchdowns, but which player projects to be able to have 10 touchdowns? Because they both project to be very important parts of the offense, have a ton of targets and receptions. T. Higgins, to me, has a much better chance of having 10 touchdowns than Keenan Allen, who has just proven that's just that's not who really his thing. more touchdowns last year? Come on, mate. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just uh, who had more touchdowns last year? I would, I would have guessed T. Higgins, but because you were asking the question, the same. They're the same. Okay, you dirty. They were the same. Yeah. Well, sure. But I mean, look, Keenan's far safer. Let's let's just put that out there. Yeah. I mean, Keenan is uh, going to catch more total passes. He'll have more total targets. He is more tried and true. He's been a top fourteen receiver five consecutive years. He really doesn't get hurt anymore. That's not a part of. The Keenan Allen experience. I mean, he's played 16. Or, well, you know, except that one playoff game. For Mike, yes. He, he will get hurt for it you. It was not just me. 
It, it is. It <laughs> don't is. sit me. There are dozens of us. It is amazing that you know we we've br- we bring up names all the time. If you've played for a long time, Matt Forte, Frank Gore, guys that were just injury problems. They were never able to stay healthy. Who then became Ironmen, and Keenan is another one, right? The first the you know the first. Uh, four years of his career was just like, uh, guy's great, but can't stay healthy. And now he plays every game. So like Debo, you know, who's like the giant injury risk to me, or Christian McCaffrey, um, maybe maybe they're not. Maybe they're going to be Iron Men the rest of the way. I'm taking I'm taking Keenan Allen. Bad decision, but I understand. Who are you taking, Andy? Yeah, oh, I hoped you were. <laughs> I <laughs> hoped you weren't going to do that. It is a very, very <laughs> difficult question. Uh, I think I feel much more comfortable with one of the two players. <laughs> it's so hard. I think T. Higgins does have a higher touchdown ceiling, without question. Yes, I would agree. So, I mean, if you're looking for, <sighs> which honestly, I think it, I have Higgins ranked like a couple spots higher it, in a half point full PPR. Give me Keenan half point. Flip a coin. It's baffling. Standard, give me T. Higgins. It's baffling because Justin Herbert is one of the guys that could easily throw over 40 touchdowns Mm -hmm. in a season. How is Keenan Allen only getting six of those? Do better, Herbert. It's a great question. Do better, Keenan. Herbert's doing just fine. Yeah. I have to blame you. How about do worse, Austin Eckler? How about you stop scoring so many times? That's really not fair. Especially after yeah, we talked that? to you last year on the show, and it sounded like you weren't going to be the touchdown guy. A liar. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean that respectfully. Oh, uh, with the utmost respect. I think we might lo- talk to him again this oh, year. Oh, I right? hope we do. We love who, Austin. Who had awesome, more, excellent. Who had more receiving touchdowns, Austin Eckler or T. Higgins? <laughs> <laughs> I see your trap. <laughs> it wasn't Eckler. It was. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought so God. too. Yeah. But that's just that's absurd. That is absurd. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is about certain players. You know, Julio had it for a long time with touchdowns. DJ Moore is allergic to the end zone. Uh, there are certain players that just we need. This, it, it doesn't make sense. We need the scientists on this. Yeah. We got to figure this out. T. Higgins is big and strong and mighty. And Joe Burrow is good. <laughs> you decide. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for the – for the uh, Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Talk to you next time. Goodbye. (laughs) Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.